But I was chatting to Genji. I said, oh, mate, I'm, I'm talking to Slady, my mate later. I said, have you got anything? He said, mate, ask him about the time when we first met on a beach in Australia and what, he said to, and what you said to him. Are you allowed to share that? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um... <laughs> on this episode of The Lockdown, I chat with Exeter Chiefs and England centre Henry Slade. We talk about Exeter. Of course we do. We talk about England. Of course we do. But we also talk about the news that is making headlines in rugby at the minute, salary cap reductions and payment reductions for the players and how Henry's been affected by it. It's interesting. Don't miss it. We're on Rugby Pass. Of course we are. You know we are. You know we are. Yeah, talk to me then. How's, uh, how's lockdown been? For you, how the last few months have been? It must be pretty strange. And this is, I've got, obviously got a couple of mates who um, are still playing. And as a young bloke, it's a bit different for me. I've got four kids now. So my yeah. setup's a little bit different to yours, your dog. And I know uh, your, is it your wife or your girlfriend? Uh, my girlfriend, Megan. Girlfriend, yeah. you've got a baby on the way, haven't you? Yeah, mate. Uh, five and a half weeks now, or under five and a half weeks now. So it's getting pretty, getting pretty real. Mate, I'd say uh, congratulations, but I'll more say good luck. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but how's it been? How's it been for someone who's in their prime of their, their life, their, the career's flying, uh, obviously the testosterone's flying around the body. How's it been having to stop and maybe a bit of reflection, maybe been good for the body? I think, yeah, I think um, it's been a bit mixed, really. I mean, at the start, I was quite, I was, I was fairly happy to have a little bit of time off, although I haven't, I haven't played for Exeter, mate. I was just thinking the other day since, like, December, I broke, I broke my leg again against Leicester away, and that's the last time I played. Last time I played for Exeter, obviously had a bit of rehab, got back, played the last couple of games of Six Nations, but then we're off again. And it's like, obviously, you work hard to get back, and you play a couple of games, and already you're pretty, you feel pretty bad again. But like we, the first month I reckon of, of lockdown, I was actually enjoying it and having a good time. I mean, I have, I have. Obviously, been working, been working pretty hard, and we've obviously been back to training for a little while now. Um, and it's been fairly tough, but like you say, it's been quite good for the body. Like all your little niggles and everything you had that you get week playing week to week, you get rid of them. But then, obviously, and that, it is quite nice to have a little break. But then soon you get to you start thinking, like, shit, I want to get back to it now because it's it's so different. Like it's like having obviously the weather's been nice. It's been like having an off season, but you haven't been able to go anywhere and do much. So. It's been sort of pretty restrictive, hasn't it? And I've had a pregnant missus, so it's been bloody, been a bit tough. But um, nah, to be fair to her, on the whole, she's been all right, to be fair. Um, but um, I think if I'm to look back on it as sort of like, a, on the whole, it's been a pretty positive experience. I think I've come out of it quite well. And I think I've come out of it in fairly good shape. I wanted to ask you because I don't want to go back too much because um, a lot of people have probably spoken about it before, but listening to Marrow uh, and the, the Pearls conversations that he, he did with Carl Sinclair, who would have thought Marrow, I told you, does a podcast, but I suppose he can do whatever he wants, can't he? Yeah, right. um, <laughs> but he's talking about reflection. He, he watched the World Cup final for the first time uh, during lockdown because he, he was either bored or maybe he'd, he'd gotten over it. Because, yeah. and I know what it's like as a player, uh, it's always about the next week. It's always about if you're injured, trying to get fit next contracts, Lions tours, Six Nations, everything's looking forward. Have you looked back at all? Have you looked back on any parts of your career? Have you looked back on the World Cup or the Six Nations, as it were? Um, I haven't watched the World Cup final back. Um, obviously, it's just, it was just pretty, it's pretty hard to take, really. Obviously, South Africa are very good on the day, but it's just a massive... It's something you always want to achieve as, as a kid growing up and obviously still now you want you really want to win a World Cup. It's like it's everyone's dream really, isn't it? And to, to be so close but then to have it taken away is, is obviously gutting. And I just haven't yeah, haven't got around to watching it. And I don't know if I ever will really, to be honest. Maybe when I'm old and old as, as old as you, uh and retired, get my feet up. Mate, you, hey, if you get to my stage, mate, you would have won it, mate. That's I would have convinced myself that we would have won the final. Yeah. Uh, but mate, no, you should. Well, I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, but I think you know, reflection is, is sometimes good, especially you know, yeah. someone like yourself, where everything has has been kind of on the up, upward trajectory. So I thought you boys yeah. were class really in the World Cup. Yeah, mate. Tell me then. You mentioned training and stuff like that, and I find it really interesting. I was chatting to my mate who's a coach as well. I won't name him, uh, but you look at players like Bowden Barrett. They're in lockdown. Goes back fitter than he's ever been. I've seen pictures. Even Owen Farrell's posting pictures on Instagram, which is unlike him, yeah. shirt off, 
back ripped to smithereens, see pictures of 40, he looks in the best shape he's ever been in. And then I see Ben Youngs. Now there is a man who has put on a bit of weight and is clearly comfortable. Um, what about yourself? Have you gone back in, in, in great shape? I've seen some of the stuff on Instagram, but that many maybe only tells a little, little part of it. I mean, the elite of the elite, bar Ben Youngs, generally go back in and use this time to, to try and get back in in good shape, eh? Yeah, I mean, I actually feel in real good shape at the minute. Um, see, we use some some people use the time wisely. I feel like I have. Um, my best mate actually who normally lives with me, but he was away during um, when the Corona sort of started. Leon Fricky is a golfer. He was away doing, with his golf. He's obviously had to come back, but we've he, even though he's a golfer, he's always been pretty athletic, um, and we've always had. Uh, so obviously we weren't living together then because he was at home. So obviously my, my girlfriend's pregnant, so I didn't want to sort of bring it back. We sort of had, like, we'd call it, call or text each other each day and we'd, we'd set ourselves uh, programs to do, like um, running sessions to do. So he'd, he'd do one, then I'd do one, and we'd have competitions, see how quick we do it and stuff. Um, so I think having that and that bit of competition is, is, has been really good because obviously if you're doing it by yourself all the time, it's just it's a bit of shit in it and it's like, it's hard to get. Um, oops, I shit my dog. Sorry, friend. Um, it's hard to sort of get the competition uh, and just keep keep having the motivation to keep improving, really, in it. And I think when you've got someone to compete against and and to work against, even though it's not right there. Um, obviously, I've been never trained with them now, but obviously, it's not not the whole time. But when when you've got a competition, it drives you on a bit. I think I've actually come out of this this uh, this sort of lockdown period, and I think. Like we say, some some were saying they feel the fittest they've been in their life. I think actually I'm probably up there as, as fit as I've been. Um, I feel like we've been going back to back to training with the boys at the club um, and been doing running sessions there and feeling good with them as well. So obviously the stuff that we've been doing in the lockdown has been working. So um, I'm yeah I'm really happy with how I've been. I've lost a, I've trimmed up a little bit, lost a couple of kilos, but I feel like it's good weight to lose. Um, I feel like. Feeling, feeling good shape, mate. It's at Exeter, right? So Exeter seems like a great club. We could probably talk a little bit more about that. What have they done uh, for forward thinking in terms of you boys being locked up? Has there been anything the club that have put on? And I, I don't know what the situation is around furlough and stuff with, with different teams. But um, how has Rob Baxter and Parksy been the fitness coach with, with you boys during these past few months? Oh, mate, to be fair, it's been really good. Um, Parksy made, like a, made a WhatsApp group. Um, for him, him, conditioners, and us boys, um, and each week, like getting boys to put on what they're doing, they're putting on what what they're doing, and, and things and sessions for us to do. Um, and then at the end of each week, he's doing sort of like a little roundup um, of how the week's gone, like a little motivational speech and stuff. He's actually pretty good, mate. To be fair, he's quite good with words, Parksy. He's quite like he's half glass, half full type type of bloke. You know him, do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I speak to him on Instagram just because I post my good yeah. life, which is my what bikes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and he, I think he pretty enjoyed it. Um, he's just had twins, actually, so he's had a pretty hectic time too. Tell me a little bit more about Exeter then, because it's almost like there's a, there's a myth of the club, and I love the story. You've been there, obviously, um, since the start. Uh, you know, you were born from, from down that way as well. And I've kind of had a different career, travelled around and finished at Saracens. We all kind of know what happened with that, but... And everyone talks about culture, right? You're, you're in arguably two of the best cultures in rugby, in the England setup, and an extra as well. And it's probably a more difficult one for you to answer because you've not been in another culture, so you maybe don't know what it's like at other clubs. But Exeter, you hear such good things. My good mate Stuart Hogs, I've gone there. He, he, he's hit the ground running. Yeah. Just talk to me a little bit about you know what it takes to be an extra player, what's expected of you, and how the team welcome players in. I think. What um what sort of stands out for me is when we first when we first um sort of signed for the Chiefs and we came through the academy and we had our first day as like a proper chief. Like we obviously with the coaches that the, the main thing that they want, Rob, Ali, Rob, the other Rob, Ricky, they just want they just want you to work as hard as you can. Um and obviously obviously it matters how, what happens when you're working as hard as you can, but the main thing they want is you to give 100% effort and if you give that you'll get everything back from them as well um, like for example even though it's not rugby we we had a um, going for a few beers when we first started one weekend when we first started at the club and um, 
we were there like, oh, do, do rugby players drink? Like, what happens? Like, what goes on? Like, I thought we, were, we were obviously oblivious to this sort of stuff. Um, we're thinking, oh, yeah, we'll go, we'll go along. We'll have a few beers. We'll see what the boys are doing. Um, and then Ricky, our academy coach, pulls us to the side. To the side. It's like me, Dickie, Nolsey, Sam Hill. Um, and he's like, right, well, you've got to go there tonight and you've got to get absolutely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> And the boys will love you. And Rob and Ali, the coach, obviously the head coaches, they'll respect you way more for it. And we're like, really? Is that how it works? Shit, let's go have a good time. So we went and had, had an unbelievable time and sort of haven't really looked back since, to be honest. And that's, that's exactly it. You go, the boys want you, to, the coaches and the boys want you to go as hard as you can in everything you do. Um, and as long as you do that, you'll get on just fine at Exeter. Um, and I think there's been, there's quite a lot. It's quite good because... Sort of, there's there's no sort of like I don't know if it, what it is in other clubs, but there's no sort of like hierarchy really. Like with boys, like academy kid coming out first year can take the piss out of debuters, and it'll be all right. You know what I mean? It's not like I've heard you've heard stories in the past of how it, maybe how it used to be. I don't know what it was like when you were, when you were sort of coming up. Um, but if you try to take the piss out of a senior guy, you get put in your place would you I guess yeah of course mate yeah I was at Leicester I was at Leicester during that I mean yeah. it's very different I mean I think I think there's there's lines there's lines you know, no one crosses and stuff but I think there's like it's not really as I, I don't know if it's like if it's the same everywhere else but extra yeah academy kid can say say take the piss out of an older, older lad and it wouldn't be sort of it's not really frowned upon you know what I mean it's quite Everyone's everyone's on the same level, and I think there's there's not really any egos, and it's it's a real nice place to go to. Us. Yeah, and how's Hoggy settled in? Because as much as he might say that he loves England, I know he doesn't. Um, but I know that he loves the, the club. Uh, you can see that smile on his face. He's a character, and he's also a world class player. Like how, how's he he's settled in? I mean, well, on I the inside, I can see by the way that he plays. But I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I say there's I say there's no egos. Hoggy's come. Oh I'm, yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, he's been good, mate. Um, He's actually settled in really well. I think he's really enjoying actually living down in Exeter. It's obviously very far from where he's come from, but I think he loves it down here. Um, his family has settled in pretty well. And yeah, he's, I think he's just really enjoying playing his rugby. I think he wanted a new challenge coming down here. Um, and he's been class for us. Obviously, I didn't see him when he first came in because obviously he got knocked out a bit earlier than us, didn't he? So um, he was, just, he a was back, just a bit. So he was back. Um, he was back for a little bit before us, but seemed to be going all right. And then when we came back, we were sort of straight into Europe. And I think that's when he sort of started kicking on a bit and really settling in. And from then, he's, he's been class for us and um, long may it continue. Mate, he has, mate. Um, extra club that I wish I would have played for, mate. It looks brilliant down there. Look, we need to talk about some stuff that's, that's going on in rugby at the minute. And you're actually a really good guy. You're really well placed, really high profile. Um, you're at one of the best clubs uh, well, you are at the best club in England, one of the best clubs in Europe. Mate, there's a lot going on at the minute. Um, it's messy, let, let, let's be honest, around the, the salary cuts, around um, the, the marquee player situation, uh, the salary cap, all this stuff's going on. You did the FIFA tournament for Rugby Pass. I know you were talking about it a little bit. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of momentum gathering. Uh, we've all seen what's happened at Leicester. I think it is really interesting. We're not looking for headlines here, but as a player, right, that is in his prime, um, the Prem's going well, Europe's going well, England are flying, and then we're, we're halted. We're all halted by this. And then now you actually look at where rugby is and all these different things that are going on. You're an amazing club, both commercially and uh, the culture, everything we've just spoken about. What's your take on everything that we're seeing at the minute that, that's happening? I think it's I think it's difficult. Obviously, there's so many players in different times in their career, and it's it's so different for each person from what situation you're in. Like, for example, if you're an academy lad coming through, you don't like. If I was an academy lad, I wouldn't want to be committing to a long a long contract because, say, I haven't really played prem, and then. You start getting you start getting more and more game time. Your value goes up and up and up massively, doesn't it? And if you're signing long contracts when your value's down here, the the increases are probably not going to be anywhere near as what what you could. I, I suppose for someone who's at the end a bit older, end of their career, sort of 30, 29, 30, they could potentially be looking at looking at going abroad because there's 
there's potentially more money there. Um, it, it was it was difficult. I mean, I want to want to be extras as long as I can, really. Um, but if if there are if there is like massive restrictions on salary caps, then and you can be earning lots more other places, then it's only a short career, isn't it? You got to make what you can. Um, obviously, a, a, a big a big part of it is that, but another big part of it is being comfortable and enjoying where you're playing and I get that and that comes into it but I think it is, it is so different for each individual person it's just no one's obviously no one's the same like you know and everyone's at different stages in their career and um, I think it is so difficult um, obviously there's been because the salary cap's reduced for what three years is it? Yeah. yeah so it's I guess it's you've got to sort of look at where you are in terms of international wise are you wanting to be around for the next World Cup. Are you not? Are you whatever? So, it's hard to say, really. Um, obviously, yeah. I've been for four years. Yeah. Uh, and that's recently, isn't it, right? Yeah. Just, yeah, you've done that yeah. recently. I mean, but that's what I mean. Didn't all that come round quite quickly? So there was a lot of pressure yeah. put up. Yeah, there's a lot going on. You guys, there's a lot of pressure. Boys had like a week. So I, I had until next, I had next year anyway. And boys had like a week or next year on my contract anyway, still going. And boys had, yeah, I think Rob came to us. We had like a week or 10 days to agree. Like, how, I don't know how many how many contracts uh, to get done. So it was all pretty rushed and um, pretty hectic. But I think Exeter have obviously always done their best to try and uh, sort out the boys as, as well as we can. Obviously, times are a bit trickier now. Um, I think it's hard for boys, but I think... Like I say, everyone's in a different position, and those boys who are at the end of their careers and want to get out probably can do and will. Um, and well, I, I think the where I'm feeling, people I feel sorry for the most is like I was saying earlier about the academy lads who are just sort of breaking through. They're the ones I think who are going to suffer the most for a few years because, like like I was saying, you want you got the potential to to jump up in earnings so much, but you can't really warrant being paid way more without having proved it already and if you're signing long-term deals without having proved it it's it's never going to be what it potentially can be is it so i think it's yeah so different for everyone really what do you what do you reckon yeah mate no absolutely look mate i love the fact that we're starting to see superstars coming to the game uh, i know marrow was probably cringing when his um image rights value brought out i love that and I obviously played the game at the highest level for years and always felt that, not me personally, but I think the blanket over the players, we weren't paid enough for what we were doing in comparison to other sports. Yeah. And I've actually loved the momentum that's gathering. Um, I personally feel, right, that whoever's making the decisions on here, I don't expect you to answer this because you might know, you might not know. I think I might know, but I'm not 100% sure and I'm not willing to put that out there. But I just think that this pandemic has given us or given rugby time to reflect on the state of the game. We've obviously had an influx of money from CBC. And I just think there's, a, there's an excuse there that actually this situation that we found ourselves in, and it's easy for me to sit, sit, sit and say this without knowing the ins and outs of it, but if you use the 25% pay cuts, let, let's use that, but now clubs, and this is what's happened to Leicester, right? So they're forcing pay cuts on players that have signed contracts. So I, I'm with the players. That, that's where I am in it. Yeah. I think it's taking a ma it's making rugby take a massive backward step. Mm. Yeah, nothing like it. And that's and that's the thing, Sadie. I think so. I look at Manu's situation, right? And uh, a lot of people would be like, "Oh, he's on whatever he's on. He's on like, let's say he's on half a million pound a year, and he's taking a twenty five percent pay cut or whatever it is." Well, your best player who's got the best contract is taking the biggest financial hit. And I just, I, I personally don't think that, that that's right. And I know all clubs are doing it differently. We can maybe talk about that because you mentioned uh, Rob Baxter got you guys in early. You're not hearing anything come out of Exeter in terms of guys unhappy. And I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are guys in the team that aren't happy about it because that's the nature of life. Not everyone's going to agree. But um, is, there, is there chat around other clubs? To be honest, I haven't actually spoken to many people from other clubs about these recent contracts um i've tried to sort of forget about it really um and just sort of crack on with what we're doing because obviously that's done and there's not much you can do about it obviously in terms of who we're speaking to i was speaking to my agent really didn't um have much 
many other people to to chat to speak to about it really to be honest um obviously there's other boys at the club that I speak to um we don't really go into details about um what it is and what how much and whatever but um yeah it's, it's difficult mate uh, sort of we as players uh we don't have any say on on what sort of goes on league wise in the uh, league league wide whatever you call it nationwide um we're sort of dictated to by everything really um and we don't really have a say in, in a lot so what happens we sort of sometimes have to have to take on the chin and that's crap really and probably should change um but we have to sort of that's the cards we get dealt and we, we have to just make the best out of out of a crap situation really yeah absolutely absolutely mate and uh, i suppose for yourself seeing the situation around manu i think you answered it then players at different ends of their career and uh, not that manu's old by any stretch of the imagination but he's obviously yeah. the highest profile uh, you've played with him and it's a shame you know i can't you know let's talk of them going to sale or, or france or whatever i just think it's a mess and Mate, no, I appreciate you sharing that with me as well. I was actually chatting to Genji a little bit about it, and he was like, "Look, mate, I'm not going to flog a dead horse anymore. I don't want to talk about it." Um, yeah, exactly. Sort of, we can redo. Really of course, absolutely, yeah, and hopefully that does change. But I was chatting to Genji. So, mate, I'm, I'm talking to Slady, my mate. Later, I said, "Have you got anything?" He said, "Mate, ask him about the time when we first met on a beach in Australia and what he said to, <laughs> and what you said to him. Are you allowed to share that?" <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, <laughs> I said, so we, we, yeah, we've been on, the, obviously we met, we had a couple of days training together in Penny Hill. We never met Genji before. This is what, 2016, just after the last World Cup, the last tour to Australia. We fly to Australia, we get there, we're in Brisbane, no, on the Gold Coast of Brisbane, one of the two. Um, and we've got this like man-made little beach in our hotel. It's real weird, but it's like actually sick. Um, and we're down there playing like this like vortex shit. Um, bit of cricket and I just stood there we'd only been in Australia a day I was like bloody hell Genji you've you tanned all right haven't you he goes I'm half black mate <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh, 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 fair play <laughs> mate he's a lad though isn't he yeah I was like I, I just didn't I just didn't know he was he looked he looked very good well, mate, uh, he does look very good. The baby rhino does. Uh, just lastly, Slady, um, hopefully everything moves forward and the season gets up and running. What was the last thing Eddie Jones said um, after that win against Wales, uh, which was a class game? It feels like a bloody year ago, two years ago. I mean, like, wh where did he leave things with the team? Have you had any chats with him? Mate, that was a long time ago. It uh, was. What did he say? Good on you, lads. Good win. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think we were getting ready. For, we were, I think it was all a bit up in the air about whether we we're going to play Italy next or not. Um, I think it was all about, uh, or was it cancelled before then? Mate, who knows? There was so much going on. Wasn't I, there? Remember. I think it was all about getting yourself ready as if we're going to play it. Um, if not, get yourselves ready for when we do play it because it will happen, he said. So I think that was pretty much it. On the whole, he was pretty pleased with the, with the Wales game uh, and the Six Nations as a whole. Um, it's just like a couple of, couple of bits where we obviously the first half against France and um, second half against Wales where we weren't quite as good and letting a few points. But I think we're on the whole he was he was pretty pleased. I actually can't remember top of my head what he said. Is wait, it was like what what month are we in now? July. Mate, this, yeah, this is the thing. I think like, yeah, just in July. Ago. I can't remember what happened last week, let alone. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have much interaction with with Eddie though? Uh, I know England's. Clearly, a massive thing in your life. We spoke a little bit about the World Cup. Does he have much interaction with the guys? I know he deals with people in different ways. The way that he'd deal with, like Joe Marler, is different to the way that he'd deal with, like a Marrow or a Genge. How's your relationship with him? Yeah, good actually. Um, obviously, we get. He doesn't ring often, but he, he texts quite a lot. You get texts, you wake up to a text and you sit, see what time it was. It was about 3 4 a.m. <laughs> He's thinking of you in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> or he's in Oz. Yeah, all that. Um, yeah, he's always he always texts to see how how things are going, how training's going, how life's going. He always always keeps in in contact, to see how how the miss is doing with the pregnancy. So that's pretty nice. She she actually appreciates that quite a lot. Um, but yeah, he's, on the whole, uh, it's weird. Question was he asked me how my moustache was a little while ago? <laughs> oh really? Yeah, well I shaved it off now, but I had a moustache for a couple of months, didn't he? he asked me. Did you, 
Do you send him a selfie and say it's off or not? I mean, yeah, no, I didn't. It was like 2 a.m. How's your moustache, mate? And I was like, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, no, yeah, he, he's he's been good, keeping in contact, keeping us keeping us sort of ticking over what we've been doing. So, yeah, it's been good. Okay, well, mate, Slady, good luck. I won't take up much more of your time. Not that you've got those to go and do, but um, no, I appreciate that though, mate. Especially with everything that's going on, and good luck when the season starts. I look forward to seeing you out there, tanned. And fit yeah. and raring to go, mate. Nice one. You got a gym session in the garage soon, have you? Mate, I have. I've done what bike this morning, mate. So ask, ask Parksy about some of them scores. It will frighten you. <laughs> Cheers, mate.